the waterways of Miami. We're not there, we're inside La Jaula in our incredible set, our venue where so many great memories have been made over the last couple years and much more will be made tonight. I guarantee it because it happens every week. You never leave disappointed and this card has been highly uh, heralded as we see the new Jaula. Ooh, look at that. We can call it Combate Gucci if we want to, but we're not. It's Combate Global. Don't mess with the branding. I might get into the principal's office with Campbell after that comment. But again, we are always changing. No stone left unturned. And we're looking towards our main event, which is Ivan Tena, who's 4-0. And it's not just that he's 4-0. Those four wins have been breathtaking. Roberto Romero, he started off slow, but he's been undefeated in his last four fights. And he has finished those fights. Carlos Rivera, Landry Ward, Valentina Escobar, Yasmin Najera. A lot of USA Mexico out there. We have USA Spain to start our preliminary bouts. And we're about to get started. So I know you love our pre-fight show, but I know you like it even better when we get to all the action. Katy Perez from Kulawi, North Carolina. Saying hi to everyone there in North Cacalaca. And Andrea Meneses, undefeated, fighting out of Gava, España. Time to get in for all the hostilities. Paramount Plus live and throughout our international footprint. The man, La Voz, Lupe Contreras, if you will. Entrando a la jaula, Katie Perez. Katie Perez, 29 year old. I always like pointing out Kulawi, North Carolina. I had the pleasure of going there. That's where the uh, campus of Western Carolina is. That's where Katy Perry went to school. She has won three of her last four fights, comes here with a lot of momentum and fighting an undefeated fighter. She feels like this could be her moment. She's waiting for it. Here she is. Yeah, she told me that, hey, listen, I took this fight. She fought not too long ago here in La Hala. And she says, look, I'm always working and evolutionizing in my game, tweaking some things are here and bulletproofing my mind. He says, my coach is the best thing out there. So she's ready, she's focused. We're going to see a very prone, in fact, a strong... Su oponente, Andrea Meneses. Started to train after watching videos of Ronda Rousey, or as she so affectionately mentioned to us, Ronda Rousey. She's Spanish MMA on the up and up, trains at Uppercut Training Center, which is the premier MMA gym in Spain, located in Barcelona. She's from Gava, which is just a little outside the, uh, the main outskirts of the city. Very proud of where she is from. Been training MMA since 2017. Decent amateur, undefeated professional. Has a great background in karate, Kyuku Shinkai. He studied that for 12 years and uh, holds a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But what's really important to focus on here is her great kicking. She has, throws a lot of high kicks, which forces Katie to keep her hands up. Time to go head to head, or as we like to call it, cara a cara. 29-year-old Perez versus 25-year-old Meneses. Both come in at five foot two inches. The reach, a slight edge for Perez, and we are in the atom weight division. Both women hitting the number. Tolupe. Este duelo, tres vueltas, división peso, átomo, this bout. Three rounds in the atom weight division. Los jueces son the judges are Richard Green Jr., Lorenzo Toledo, and Mark Streisand. Presentando la esquina azul, vestida de blanco, presenting the blue corner, wearing white. Marcó un peso oficial de 105 libras. She registered an official 105 pounds in cinco combates. Mantiene un record de tres victorias y dos derrotas and five pro bouts. She maintains a record of three victories against two losses. The Greensboro, South Carolina, conocida como la máquina asesina. Katie! Su rival en la esquina roja, vestida de negro, her opponent in the red corner, wearing black. Su peso oficial, 105 libras y media. Her official weight, 105 and one half pounds. Hasta la fecha, no conoce la derrota con un récord invicto de tres combates profesionales. To date, she has yet to taste defeat with an undefeated record of three victories. Representando a Gaba España, Andrea Cali. Menezes. El referee, 
Alan Abeles. Alan Abeles, the third inside of La Jaula. Commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up the head, come out fight. Judge. 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 The aerial shot of the new Hala. I won't mention it too much more. I'm just a little mesmerized. So we it's get ready. Fresh. It's ready? fresh. Friday Exciting, Friday. as Kudo the Gang would say. We are underway. Meneses in black, sporting the yellow and red of Spain on her top. Perez, three and two. Adam Waite, which is, you would say, how can you get this much talent at 105 pounds? But Combate Global has managed. We have seen some humdingers at 105 pounds in each of the last two or three weeks. And Meneses is one that has been identified as a potential number one if she can continue on the trajectory she is at. Everyone is aiming for Ana Palacios, but be careful what you wish for. Oh, there's a lot of people that have the target of Ana Palacios, but right now Katie working to clinch. Manessas with those hooks. Perez trying to take down her opponent here. She tried to use or bring that leg that right leg of Meneses to the floor, using that right leg to break her down. But now Meneses switching gears. And now she has the upper hand in the clinch. Last time we saw uh, Katie, man, she was very, very impressive in the howla. So she has to continue that momentum. An elbow there from Katie. We saw Katie in July of 2022. She brought, she beat Chrysula Kukuvatakis via submission triangle choke in the first round. So no slouch whatsoever. Underestimate her, you're gonna find yourself in trouble if you're Meneses, who again, undefeated, known as Kali. Saw her last in April, defeated Stephanie Uruso via unanimous decision. Katie came into that fight as the underdog and she put a quick work to her opponent. And once again, she's searching that for that leg, for that takedown. Vanessa, she did her homework. She knew that Katie was gonna try to take this fight to the floor. She wants to keep this standing. But Vanessa feels very comfortable with those kicks at the, that hand. By the way, in the Adam weights, Ooh. now Claire Lopez, who we saw fight at 115, is number two at 105 as an exchange of fights. First it was Meneses, and Perez didn't like it. She returns fire. Single leg. You know, I, <laughs> Katie just put a smile on me. As, as soon as they exchanged there, she was just smiling because she just likes the action, man. Very competitive young lady. Right now, number seven in the Adam weight rankings is Meneses. Unranked, Perez, but she wins here. She will find her way in the top 10. Has to be careful here. She does have that knee. Hang on that leg. No knee shots when a fighter has a knee on the ground. Meneses here, curl work from this angle, some elbows for the guard, but Perez trying to oh, put those, those legs around. Into the guard. And an trying arm. to go an arm bar opportunity, maybe. She might have something there. She's got some control, and she's got Meneses squeezed in in her guard the into the rubber saw, guard. Last time we oh saw boy. Perez. This is what she did last time. She may be A setting it up, choke. Arm bar, banging away. Another stretch for Perez. From Kulawi, North Carolina. Menes is hanging on. She's found herself in a very dire situation, and Perez has got a real good grip. And now she has tightening that triangle now. And at the arm. Now arm the arm bar again. I, I, I think you should stop. I think She's you got stop the full arm bar. Ah. Meneses. She may have something here, Max. She's able to get out. No. Meneses, absolutely fantastic counter punch there from Meneses to get out of a very dire situation. Meneses not giving up, though. Gets right back into it. Now she got yeah, out of dodge. Good now. call. Get out of dodge. Now she's forcing this fight to the feet where Menezes likes to fight. Katie, though, answering back with shots. Fantastic round for Perez. Got off the ground and shot out of a cannon. Not the smoothest striker, but still showed her intentions. Katie, though, with those hooks. Menezes, the knee. 
Vanessa right. felt very comfortable with that stand-up game. She wants to take this fight to the center of La Jaula. Vanessa is very proud to represent Spain. She also says she's just proud to be a girl, a woman. Not many fighters get to say that. I want to be a flag bearer for women in this game. Vanessa is again trying to use those knees, elbows from this position of the clinch. Tremendous first round, which is about to come to an end. Very interesting what to take away from that. There was that long stretch of 90 seconds, two minutes, where Venez was, I thought, had finished the fight. Looked like she had that arm locked in. Vanessa did very well to counter out. Vanessa has done her homework. She knows that Perez has much success on the ground attempting takedowns. The opportunities were there for arm bars, triangles, but Vanessa's countered, defended very well, and was not caught. Forced this fight to get right back to the feet where she's had much success. Let's take a look at the action. Perez right from the start, exchanging with her opponent. Right for the clinch work here, landing some knees, some shots. Good stuff. Back here for round two, Katie Perez in white. We're gonna find out the score. And again, if you're joining Combate Global for the first time, we hand out the official scorecards from the judges. Not a projection. Uh, Benes felt like she got maybe yeah. poked in the eye. And, and now the rule is, uh, they recently ruled it. I, I don't know if it comes into play yet, but if you do get poked in the eyes, just like if you're, ki you're kicked in the midsection or hit in the midsection, you're gonna get those five minutes, but I don't think it's coming to play yet. Max. Oh, now. Oh, man, this is has gone in there. And, and a rear naked, or almost a, now she slides Vanessa's in. Been, get this, she has the howl of Underneath the chin. This she, Katie oh, she's may be in trouble. trouble. Ben is grimacing. She may be in trouble. Meneses has to talk in a little bit longer. Elena Bellis with our obstructed view Vanessa turns around. Yeah, Katie needs to rip that grip. She needs to rip that grip and turn the face, put her chin down. She's uh, she's breathing. Meneses lost that grip, so Katie right now is doing what she needs to do. Now, as soon as she lets herself put that chin down so she won't connect. Uh, still going, Meneses. Yeah. She, I don't think she feels threatened, even though that there arm is, is probably underneath down. her chin. Now she got the chin down. Now she will be able to skin. Now she has to turn now. Turn to her left side. Vanessa's is not stopping. Gets into the guard. That's Vanessa's. Right now is her fight right now. She has the howla there. Oh, posting the knee on her hand, preventing Katie from doing anything and landing those shots. Menezes may have lost the first round. I would venture to guess she did, but she's making sure that she doesn't lose the second or this fight doesn't go beyond the second round. I think Menezes is just waiting for the right opportunity so Katie can get on those two feet and land a knee for this position because it's right there for you. Look at the positioning, Max. She's posting the head down. She's just waiting for Katie to get on her feet so she can land that knee. Maybe right here. Nope. Back to the feet. Now we get him back. get him back now. Again, the first round was good. The second round's been pretty solid as well. Great stuff from both these women. And now the fight straight down to the ground again. There's the open scoring, Max. Ben has won the first round, as expected. Now Katie wanted to take this fight to the ground. Look for that single leg to scoop her down and trip her. But Manessa's just good howl of psychology here. We're using it to her advantage, preventing Perez from taking this fight to the floor. And look at Perez using the elbows from the back. Yeah, very impressive how it looked like this fight was probably ending. The rear naked was locked in, but she just kept going. No panic in her whatsoever. Now she's back to the feet and still with a chance to maybe get this round back. Stop, stop, stop. Andrea, Andrea. Separating both ladies. Now, Perez needs to come in with that. It's almost like she's looking down. 
It's always important to look at your opponent in the eyes. Now, I don't know if she tries to use that there to faint so she can go ahead and fool her opponent. Manessas is really doing a number here. Knee. Big She's knee. She's been waiting for Again, that match. that one dropped her. But wait a minute, no, she Time had one out. leg down. She had one leg Illegal down. Illegal knee. Yeah. She the was a grounded one. opponent. The second one. It was the second one. And she was Do waiting fighters for that. Put that uh, are there ever thought where they put that down intentionally? I mean, obviously they're trying to get up. No, but it was that knee. It was that knee. Right. Look at the first one was she, clean. That good. was clean. Then and the hand right goes there. down. No, 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 no. no. She, right there. Okay. Wasn't that okay? No, that's. Wow, I'm surprised they let her slide. I don't, I don't see any point deduction there. Take your time. I, I, I don't see Stop. any point Just deduction. Just to be safe. And she's been waiting for that. Manessas had been setting in her, setting her up, wondering the clinch. And she was down. She was just waiting for her to get and connect. And it was in the center of La Hala. Now, what is what can't were. you do with the knee when the the fighter's on the knee? You can't deliver. If one knee is one down, thing. if one leg is that one knee is down, you cannot hit your opponent uh, with a knee. You can't. She was down for both of those, trying okay to protect the fighters as best you can. Back in the day, like in yes. the pride rules, or you'd be able yeah. to. Or the old know, days, punk so kick them. <laughs> when uh, Campbell McLaren yeah. created UFC, okay. anything goes. Right, but of course now the, the rules have changed. And that might be a rule that's up for debate. Uh, yeah, there, there's some there's some, some people feel that they yeah that they let it slide, uh, but to each his own, right? Yeah, obviously safety first, Good. and need somebody when they're down like that right, could I'm be call gruesome. It unintentional, and not okay. take a point. So no point. Just unintentional yeah. in the okay. eyes. He let that slide. He let and that let slide. it continue because the doc said she's fine, and she said she's fine. Okay, but how much damage did that do? She seems to be okay. The action, so I'm not going to take a point away. Since you can continue, I'm going to let you guys continue. Okay. All right. You're not going to lose a point this time. You do it again. Espanol. It's a language there. Who can speak Spanish? translator. Yeah. There's about 100 people in the house. I think can they're speak okay. okay. <laughs> Explain to her that I'm not taking a point away because I think it was undetentional. But if, if she does it again to a downed opponent, I will disqualify her immediately. Disqualify. No point Ooh. deduction. Right. Disqualification. Ready? Ready? Great Time to in. have the uh, right. officials mic'd, and Alan yeah. Novella's very clear in making sure the fighter understands, because that's very serious. One minute 20 to go, round two. An extended round two. Charnessa is going to make that mistake anymore. Perez, when, he, when she throws a bad jab, that left chin there, a little bit exposed. She has to be very quick. Just throw it in there. Follow up maybe with a cross or a hook. Good. The jab, it ain't pretty from Perez, but it's creating some distance and it's making, it's getting her some points. Another good jab. Now she ducks out, trying to come over the top with that power right. Perez's corner told her, listen, you, you have a longer reach to her, so you have to use that jab to set it up. And we saw that she was very confident in her ground game, so that jab could be that setup so she could change the level. Though she got caught with that kick, overhead, right. 30 seconds to go in round two. Katie Perez has three victories in her career, all of them via submission. Looking to get the right chance to strike Meneses. Meneses was on the ropes in round one, has gotten off of them here in the second. Now Perez is not working the body. Oh, she got caught with that one. She, when she comes in, she needs to keep that head up. She's keeping herself exposed. She can't get sloppy. Great combinations from Vanessa. Fantastic from her with the exception of the knee. Dominating round two for the Spaniard. There you go, Meneses now in all likelihood winning round two. How does she build off of that? Great work for Meneses, especially towards the end of that round. She just went to flurry of punches. Look at this right here. Again, that, that just, knee, well, the knee that was, was almost up. The second one right. is where her knee was down and you cannot do that. Let me tell you, she got away with it because Alan was kind of a cordial there. He, he but, that slide, but she was okay. That's so why he let that slide. But, but he made it clear. Another one, and it's a DQ. And it's not even a point deduction. The fight will be automatic disqualification. All right, let's go. Last round, last round, last round. 
Round three, everything to fight for. We'll get the official scoring for round two. Menezes picks up right where she left off. Striking in repetition, knees and punches. And that tight clinch, those knees, those elbows. Manessis looks very good in there. Menes has been uh, prolific here with the striking. Kick to the lead leg by Perez. She's got to slow down this onslaught. Menes is in three strikes in one sitting. And when she just feels that that very punch, she just moves forward, doesn't stop. She sets up that one-two combination and follows up with the kicks. Katie, she, she needs to. Where, oh, she just gave her back. Not, 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 not looking good for Katie right now. She needs to use that there, that inside kick, to slow her down. And she can't find the range. Yeah, and the strikes are not hurting Menezes, who's getting stronger and stronger. She was talked about it. She said, "The more rounds there are, the more dangerous I am. It's what separates me. Is the hunger I have as the fight goes on." In her three pro fights, did have the first round TKO. In October of 2021, the other two going the distance. She's comfortable in this capacity. Katie is just, when she throws, she keeps her head down. Not what we saw from her in the beginning of the fight, but look at Menezes with those elbows, knees. Oh, beautiful tie work. Uh oh, Ben is in trouble. She turtles up. Oh. Menezes looks to finish this fight. Ben is hanging on. That's all Beres is doing. She's just hanging on for More. those last three minutes and change. Another breakthrough fighter from Spain. It's happening. We've said it from certain countries. Combate Global is all over it. We have a huge audience in Spain, and they tune in to see their very own. they got to be very proud about the process here of Andrea Menezes. Menezes putting the brakes on Perez's takedown attempt. Wow, Spain must be very proud of this young lady. Oh, she even called her out to stand up. That's how confident she is. Ben is still going forward. Man, great work. Ben is looking for some sort of opening for her submission. Second degree black belt in Chinese Kempo. Brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Training down there in Phoenix. With the open scoring we got, Max. We're all level. So this fight could still be won wow. despite the fast start for Menezes in round three. High kicks. This intensity is going to pick up. Hats off to the matchmaking. Excellent fight here. Great match. Now that the work here, now she may get that. Uh, now she gets for the knees. Well, that knee is down though, so she can't knee her. Very important. Now she can. And look at Manessa's corner telling her to hit the elbows, hit the elbows. She's done. There they are. There, there's the bet. There's the elbows that she's throwing. Great hand exchange. Perez. She keeps her head down again, leaving herself very vulnerable because Manessa's is throwing in those knees. Perez tried to go to that head and arm throw, but was denied. Now Maness is on top. Trying to get the half guard. Maness says this is great business for her to finish off this fight. Still far from secure as she's into the guard of Perez. Perez is looking for that arm from an arm bar. Well, how sweet it would be with just a minute left if she were to get this victory. But no, Maness is not. It's literally just wrapping around. She's hanging on to that arm. Vanessa in this corner, take that arm out. She surely did. Give her an inch, and Benes will jump at it. She still has half seconds. Oh. Oh, she's shot to the body. Let me tell you, Vanessa's knee work is just very impressive stuff. And she learned from that mistake not to hit those knees when their opponent is on the floor. And, and it could happen, right? It's just instinct. You're in the moment, the momentum is going. Separates a Malina Bellis, the crowd. It's a very select invite to get inside the studios there to be Howl aside. Big knee. Everyone in Miami wants to be oh. there on a Friday night. It's better than one of the nightclubs in Miami, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's saying a lot. <laughs> Perez is exhausted, as is Menezes. To the final moment, a three round thriller. Woo!
great job for these women. Kevin, Kevin Gaslam amongst hey. those taking it in. We'll be back for the official decision. It seems like it's Meneses' night, but you never know. We'll be back with Lupe Contreras. Soy Valentina Escobar, tengo 24 años y vengo de Santiago de Chile. Yo practico judo desde los 14 años y empecé a hacer MMA, pero como recreativo, como es para soltar el striker y hacer un poco de lucha también, pero en poco supe que tenía que pelear. Representar a, a mi país en combate es un privilegio. Somos pocos los peleadores chilenos y la idea es que cada vez los chilenos podamos llegar a, a mejores ligas, a grandes eventos como combate. Mi estilo de pelea es un estilo súper completo. Vengo de una base de lucha, años de entrenamiento y he soltado mucho también el striking. Me siento sólida, me siento fuerte, me siento potente, así que me siento completa. Mi primera pelea, mi debut aquí en combate, fue contra la mexicana Fernanda Larios. Fue una pelea súper intensa, no hubieron tiempos muertos. Todo el rato estuvimos tirando, tirando y, y haciendo derribo, defensa. Eh, bueno, me llevé la victoria por decisión unánime. Hoy voy a pelear contra Yamin Nájeras, como otra mexicana, que sé que son de peleas de alta intensidad. Y no, pues espero que hagamos una buena pelea, espero dejarlo todo en la jaula. Creo fundamentalmente que yo tengo ganas. Yo vengo a ganar, yo no vengo a, a pasear, no vengo a jugar, vengo a hacer lo que hago todos los días. He luchado mucho por esto y no voy a dejar que nadie me lo quite. Yasmín, nada, solo decirte que te prepares. Vamos a hacer una lucha intensa. Eh, vengo más fuerte que nunca y lo vas a hacer. We are now back and ready for the official decision. Is it Perez? Is it Meneses? We're about to find out. What a way to start our evening's hostilities here inside La Jaula. To Lupe. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, los jueces están de acuerdo con tarjetas idénticas. De 29 a 28 after three rounds of much more action. The judges are in agreement with scores of 29 to 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision, los tres, a favor de la vencedora por decisión unánime, de España, Andrea Calimeneses. 4-0, that carries a lot of water, Andrea Meneses, or a lot of sangria, as she is victorious against a very game, Katie Perez. Probably the right decision. Lost the first round, one rounds two and three. In that second and third round, and it's just picked up the pace. Great stuff from this year, leader for Spain. We'll be back, and we'll get you back up for it. Another undefeated fire, Jarrett Betancourt taking on Rodrigo Garcia. Campbell McLaren inside La Jaula, which means it gets his seal of approval. And uh, the Uppercut Training Center staff delighted with that result. They get in there along with Mike Aframowitz. Again, MMA gets popular when you have success, when your own finds success. And we knew in Spain, first it was the Canary Islands, but now we have good fighters in Barcelona. You have good fighters in Los Países Vascos. It's growing. This is not a blip on the radar. It's the real McCoy. Welcome to Miami. Bienvenidos a Miami for Combate Global Downtown Biscayne Boulevard. The Bay. So many people coming here. I travel here every week, uh, Rodolfo, and the flights are always jam-packed. And there's a row of people that want to get on, and you can't because everyone wants to come to Miami. It's the place to be. I'm not sure they're all coming to see Combate Global. They should. You don't, you don't need to. You're watching it on Paramount Plus. You can see it on Paramount Plus on a Friday. You can watch it on a plane. Tight. Cruise. Jared Bettencourt, 4-0. <laughs> here in the uh, flyweights. Taking on Rodrigo Garcia from Monterrey. Can also fight at 135. He is getting another fight here. He just was in the Paula against Michael Reyes, the number one flyweight back in April. A fight he lost, but took it to the deep end of the pool. This is going to be a good one, and it's coming your way right now. The new Haula awaits. 
I've been saying all these nice things about the new cage. What are your thoughts? I You're like a fashion it. guy, right? If you want me to tell the truth, I'm not. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what sells and I know what looks good, and that's that holla. It, it, it's different, you know. It, it's appealing. It doesn't always have to be the same thing, and that's what Compate Global is all about. It sets us apart, just like in our fight game. It's a, it, it's mucho más acción, knockouts, TKO, submissions, fast pace. And that's what all about that howl is all about. But look at the color, man, the texture. Lupin looks good at that, too, by the way. He look, he fits right he in does. with that, he with that canvas. He is a man of the finer things, including that voice of his. Look at that. Good stilo, man. Great stuff from the folks, our designers, Combate Global. Always uh, setting the, the, the tone for the fight game. Really looking forward, though, to this upcoming fight or preliminary bout between Jared Betancourt and Rodrigo Garcia from Mexico. Should be a fun one, a, a good stand-up war between these two youths, the young dudes coming into action inside La Jaula. It's gonna be a good one here in the flyweight division. Let's go to Lupe. Entrando a La Jaula, Jared Bentancourt. Jared Bettencourt, local fighter, Hollywood, Florida. They are just up north of Miami in uh, Broward County. He is donning the Puerto Rican flag. He has won titles at 125. This is a guy that's been identified by Combate Global as someone who could cause havoc in a very good flyweight division. This guy has only competed professionally. Get this, I'm not, I'm not making this up, Max, but for less than 10 minutes. Because all his fights have come to an end in the first round. His longest going four minutes and 55 seconds. And now his opponent, we go back to Lupe. Su rival, Rodrigo Garcia. Rodrigo Garcia, father of two. Just welcomed a new child. Congratulations to him. Monterrey, a big fighting town, fights out a Lions Alpha team with his coach, Nino Marroquin. Also trains with Nino's brother, Levy, who you just see getting out of the picture with the gray shirt. This is a very good fighter at 125. Unlucky against the number one ranked flyweight, Michael Reyes, back in April. It was a very competitive bout between those two. And a former football player, and I'm not talking about soccer, I'm talking about American football players. So this guy has a heart of a lion, fast patient, great striking. This should be a fun fight between these two. These guys love to stand and bang. Head to head, cara a cara. Both very young. Garcia, two years the senior. Bentoncourt with a four inch height advantage, although Garcia, two inch via the reach. We're at flyweight, 126 pound limit. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Este duelo, tres vueltas, división peso mosca. This bout three rounds. In the flyweight division, los jueces son, the judges are Richard Green. Richard Green Jr. y Lorenzo Toledo. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de blanco, presenting the blue corner, wearing white. Marcó un peso oficial de 125 libras y media. He registered an official 125 and one half pounds. Entra la jaula, buscando mantener su récord invicto de tres victorias. He enters la jaula, looking to remain undefeated with three victories. Fighting out of Broward County, Florida. And Boricua to the bone. Jared to Salad Bentanco. Su rival en la esquina roja, vestido de rojo con blanco, his opponent in the red corner, wearing red with white. Su peso oficial, 125 libras y tres cuartos, his official weight, 125 and three quarter pounds. En su quinto combate, con tres victorias y una derrota en his fifth pro bout, with three victories against one defeat. Puro Monterrey, Nuevo León, México. Rodrigo Pelón García. El referee, Marcos Pérez. Marcos Pérez, the third inside the house. As you can hear, the gyms are all inside the house. The goat shed, the bone breakers. They're getting into USA Mexico. This is as good as it's been in there. 
this is fun. I mean, we're here. This was a, a product of COVID, Rodolfo. We were here so they could get fights. Everyone's being tested regularly. They still are. And there wasn't anyone. And now we're getting to that point where it's feeling normal. And this is going to grow. In 2023, it's going to get bigger. We are underway. And it is Garcia in the red and white shorts. Center of the Haula for Betancourt. Jared Betancourt training out of the Gochette Academy top gym here in Florida. And then Rodrigo Garcia on the opposite end. I mean, again, these guys love to throw hands. They're not shy about anything. They're going to go all out. Betancourt has yet to know what a defeat is. All his fights have been finished in the first round. Ooh, Garcia caught him. Garcia was an undefeated fighter until the Reyes fight. Oh, uh, and Garcia knows it. Look at that smile. And now Benicourt, who took the center of the howl now on the outskirts. Oh, uh, Jared Benicourt tasted that leather from Garcia. Little good low kick there to set up. He's going to follow up with some of that striking. Betancourt, like so many South Florida fighters, began fighting on the streets. His friend Bryce Gamboa, you've seen in Combate Global, was his introduction to MMA. He, he fights here at Flyweight. He also fought at 115. We don't have a 115-pound men's division here. Ooh. Wouldn't say no to it. You get enough fighters, you can kick the tires on that. Very fast pace so far, very cautious. They're feeling it out, but Garcia, that's that. Oh, great right hand. Another low kick. Rodrigo Garcia is the number three ranked flyweight. Betancourt not ranked as he makes his combate debut. Garcia doing what he needs to do. Putting in that leg, preventing Garcia to take it this fight to the ground, keeping it standing. It is festive inside the studio. Benicourt back and forth. Yeah, Benicourt crowning on a rear naked choke back in May of 2021. Tit Ooh. for tat, smack that hit the hand of Betancourt. Straight left by Garcia. Suffered an injury to the fibula playing football as we talked about his football career. That was in 2013. Big injury. Garcia, he's just aggressive, not stopping from anything, throwing everything. And he has great cardio. We saw it up against uh, when he took on Mikey Reyes. He's just consistent. And Benicor now testing his, his hand that he pointed out to him. This is a fun fight. You can tell these dudes are just having fun in there. Garcia now taking the center. Two minutes and a few seconds to go here in the opening round. Both well supported. USA, Mexico, but both feel like the home team right now, the way it sounds. So the chance of Mexico and some USA's in there too. Into a tight clinch for a split second. Fighting is in the blood of Court. His father is also a, a boxing trainer in New York. Doesn't take training from his dad. Just yeah. a, po a few pointers. Well, they're, they're, you know, they're Florida, New York. But he does give him some pointers every now and then, he told me. <laughs> How much does he pay attention? I'm sure he does. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's fathers and sons. Sons have been rolling eyes at dads from the beginning of time. Sometimes the kids do like to get instructions from someone other than their dad. I can attest to it. Yeah. You get that other, the other side, you know, something that we don't tend not to uh, to say as fathers. That was blocked, but still pretty firm from Betancourt. A few feints to try and set up that overhand right. Benicourt, a minute to go. Betancourt has a, or uh, Garcia has a little damage to the nose. A little red there. Out of faint from Rodrigo. Betancourt just testing, very patient. Finding the right spot. Garcia, though, not shy for throwing anything. He's not really backing up or testing. He just throws it if he feels he has to. Benancourt, the more cautious of the two. Oh, one, two. Oh, Look at that. Oh, Benancourt finishing strong. Garcia oh, smiles, but it, that, it, his nose is a little jacked yeah. up. If this is the first round, I can just imagine how the second and the third is going to be. It's going to be fun as the pace will be picked up. 
All right, this is the first time, Max, that Benacore will reach the second round. Oh, oh look at that big back kick. Spin. Impact striking. We're going to go to a second round. People are standing outside La Hola. We'll go to a round two. Hopefully it's as good as round one. Well, we had an, a humdinger in our first fight, and this one's heading in that direction. So much at stake here with the rankings, with national pride. And Garcia started off well, but I think uh, Bethancourt has to feel good about the pacing. Especially towards the end of that round, he felt a little bit more comfortable landing in some shots. He started off a little bit slow in the beginning. Garcia was the one to put the speed there in that fight with the low kicks and the punches, but Benancourt was just patient waiting to exchange. As I see, the coach shed a cat the coach stating his work before the second round. Janet Bittencourt. But there is the support for Garcia. Ro Garcia. Bettencourt 4-1-1 one one as an amateur. In his professional career, two knockouts, one submission in his four victories. So generally, his fights do not go the distance. Doesn't want this one to go the distance. It's the first time Bettencourt fights in the second round as a professional. As he points out, a lot of charisma in this fight. Great cross, but as he came in, Rodrigo struck him. And they're just, you know, they're talking to each other in that fight, Max. Garcia now reeling a bit. I would imagine Betancourt's finish may have put his nose out in front for the first round. We'll get the official scoring here momentarily. Garcia, all his fights but one in his professional career have gone the distance. That was back in 2019 when he submitted via rear naked choke Cesar Briones. All of his four fights have occurred at Combate. Benancourt takes that first round, as you can see in the open scoring max, rightfully so. He Missing. Most damage. Great footwork from both fighters, and particularly Bethancourt. I think he's been taking some of the tips from his dad with the footwork. You can see he changes angles quickly Stance, yep. and smoothly. Little wax on, wax off, denying the strikes there for Garcia. Yeah, he, he baits him in. He baits him in. Oh, straight left. Work. Oh, and Ooh. a big hook on the left. Elbow. Garcia's starting to wear down. Bet Betancourt is just banking on that cross. Look for that cross. Because Rod Rod Rodriguez is he's coming. He's had much success with that low kick. He'll follow up, maybe a one-two punch, and then back out. And then what Betancourt does is he uses that right to strike. He has a lot of power in that right. He's just waiting for the right moment. And but these guys are so fast. Look at that right jab by Betancourt. Changing stances repeatedly, both fighters. Another laser fast right hand. That was a right hand lead. It's the lead leg, Betancourt gets out of dodge, and there's a chance to close the gap for Garcia. He goes for the single leg. Look at those elbows from Betancourt. And, and they're, they're right Betancourt there. getting some coaching from the Goat Shed yeah. crew. <laughs> you gotta love the Goat Shed folks there. They're very animated, to say the least. Ooh. Oh, great combination, doubles up. Yeah, but, he, but Gar Garcia's though had his guard up, blocked all those shots. So he's had much success with that low kick, but follow through. You Good set it up. The ribs. That low kick is a setup. Maybe some shots to the to the to the body would help out a lot here. Look at the uh, the punches exchanged. 34, even at a piece. 28 kicks for Garcia. Real time stats. It looks pretty even there, although the eyeball says Betancourt. Because he's struck. He's yeah, hit. He's hit. Slips down. Gets. Double leg. Look, Look at the dub Garcia. Court. Garcia, a little couple way to get out. They're so fast, these two dudes. I mean, and, and Bethancourt's a big flyweight. Yeah. So and remember, they, they, they have to cut that weight, but now, you know, of course, fight day. 
Chance of Mexico. Great tip there, that one, two. Garcia is not a knockout fighter. If he loses this round, uh, he's going to oh. head into uncharted waters. He tried to go for a highlight reel, better core, perhaps looking for that flying knee, but Garcia, very smart to get out the way. Our first look at Jarrett Bethencourt, and it's a real oh, good look okay. as he gets hit low. Oh. And that stops the momentum for Bethencourt. To a vulnerable region. That's going to hurt. Let's see if we take a look at the high of that replay. Ro Garcia will get uh, the full five minutes if it required. It Let's see how. Oh, that was pretty right solid. Yeah. And that's what that's a, a move that Bethencourt could have avoided. You have the momentum, you have your opponent reeling, and now you stop this fight, which is the last thing you want to do. It happens, especially when you, you're going in for the in. Better court just found the opportunity. It was unintentional. It happens all the time. It happens to me. It's just, you know, you Did you have a cup? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Receiving or? Uh, no, no, giving, 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 giving. giving. Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's, it's. It's something you don't want to do. It's, it's, it's just that goes without saying, uh, Rodolfo. It happens. Lead leg, Garcia. Oh! oh. After the low blow, oh. firing both guys, looking for the big one. Garcia with that nasty hook. It shook Benicourt, though. Don't, don't. Yeah. Don't be. Uh, Benicourt is locked in, switching yeah. repeatedly. Big kick, roundhouse. Benicourt has been had much success with a quick. Switching a stance is throwing Garcia off. Another big talent developing before our eyes. Jared Betancourt putting on a show in his combate debut, but can he finish the job? We're headed to round number three. Good stuff. Well, that they, the two would extend. I mean, that was uh, in friendly terms. That yeah. they were they were just maybe recapping the fight on their own. We'll do that for them. <laughs> wow, the goat shed crown, you could hear him saying, easy fight, easy fight. We'll see if their guy can finish the job. Well, let's take a look at that second round. Great overhand left, and then an elbow. He snuck in there and even laughed and said, hey, I, I stuck it in to Rod, uh, uh, Garcia. Then Garcia followed up with some body shots, attempted to go to the floor, but Bettencourt said, nope, not today. Landing in those elbows, low kick. Uppercut from Betancourt. Clearly here, he is the one that connected the most. Although Garcia was very active, but those punches were, they just weren't connecting. He's had much success with the low kicks. We are back. Jared Betancourt, five foot eight inch flight weight, who is, Fought at 115 pounds. He's fought at catch weights at 120 pounds. This is the lowest weight division he can get into. And he still looks big. He's a big dude for this weight division. But it's amazing he could go lower and comfortably make weight. Yeah. I wouldn't say comfortably, but make weight. Garcia able to close the gap. Rare moments to do that. Oh, and poke, he, in the eye. poke in the eye. Garcia apologizing there. Ooh, look at that cut from Garcia. That is deep. Underneath the left eye. That will not be stopped by the glue. That will require something a little stronger. Let's take a look at that shot here. Throws him off. I, kind of odd to see from that position. Is when he pushed him off. And Benincourt uh, is bleeding from the, from the ear side? Or maybe it was some, some, some blood from, from Garcia. They got to take a look at that. that. It's dripping. Yeah. I saw some blood in that Marco left Benes ear. Marco will keep us going. Both these fighters want to go. Another big kick. Garcia's get caught. If he can get into tighter confines. Yeah, but great, great. Pro. See, see look, look at that left ear of Betancourt. He's, is he bleeding from there? See that? The back of that ear? Yeah, but. Huh. 
nothing compared to his opponent. Nope. And uh, we, we mentioned Mikey Ray is number one. He's preparing oh. for a fight soon. Yeah, it could be that Benicourt maybe has some cauliflower and Garcia just opened it up. It's USA Mexico, but as you see, Betancourt repping Puerto Rico. Got a lock of the hips here of Garcia. Maybe going to give him a ride here in round three. Betancourt, look how uh, very effective using that leg as we look at the open scoring max. Betancourt ahead of the cards. But it's not to the numbers he knows. And Asim. The Goat Shed Academy coach says this all the time in his camp, Mucho Mas Acción. They live by that slogan. Toe in the company line. Yeah. Separates again. Great front kick from Betancourt. What I like about Betancourt is he's, he managed to slow Garcia down by him being patient. He didn't give in to the fight that Garcia wanted to do, that fast pace. He ben found a way to calm them down. Benicourt just has a real good timing, and he, whatever pace you want, it's going to end up being his pace. He can dictate that. Really impressive to see him here for the first time. Bright future. And the folks at 125, be warned. It's a Ooh, loaded looking number. Looking for the highlight reel finish. Whoa! Oh, a little Showtime Pettis action there. Little Anthony Pettis <laughs> almost off the top of the cage. <laughs> this guy's fun to watch. Jared Bentoncourt, senores y senoras. I mean, Rodrigo Garcia is a highly <laughs> touted flyweight, number three ranked at Compate Global. He and he's been down. second best all night. He shot him down in this round, Max. Garcia is not the same person that we saw in that first and second. And it's, and it's not because he's tired. It's just he just can't find an opening to strike and be as, uh, as fast-paced as he was earlier on. Two good young fighters, but one young fighter that much better. One minute, 53. Garcia's going to have to dig deep, but he's hurt. He's bleeding, and he's being outmatched and outpointed. Oh. Yeah, Garcia, he just can't find an opening. He can't strike. Look, he hasn't even been able to connect those low kicks as he was doing earlier on in the fight. Not throwing any overhand right, rights, which he was doing. It's also worth mentioning, this is the first professional fight for Betancourt in 11 months. Does not look like any act inactivity on him whatsoever. He told me I stayed busy, he said. I stayed busy, he's training with the Ghost Shed Academy. Oh. One of those connect is going oh, to be gnarly. Night. One minute to go here in the final round. Another one. He's just searching for yeah, that highlight reel. It's been a really bit court avalanche right now. Another Again. attempt. <laughs> Evie pointed out second one. <laughs> Looks like the fight just started. He is on his toes. Crisp got pop, got a little step. This guy just looked like a character from a video game. Something, at least he withdrew that lead leg. Something for Garcia. But as this fight's gone on, uh, the fitness, the cardio, just the athleticism of Betancourt shining through. Again. Great block. Vicious. I, I won't be surprised if Betancourt tries to do that Showtime Pettis one He's more time. He's thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he really is. Each time he lays it out, he has his big grin on his face. Oh, great front kick. Trying to go for that crane kick. Well, Knock Mom's going to be real proud. Mom is his biggest fan. Dad, the boxing trainer, I'm sure, is going to be very pleased as well as Jared <laughs> Betancourt. Remember the name from pillar to post here in our preliminaries, which never disappoint. We'll be back. Look at the highlights here. Wow. And that was uh, yeah. at the uh, early stages of round three. That was unintentional there, poking the eye, but just 
great stuff from both these men. The energy, he attempted in the Showtime Pettis. He did that twice in the fight. Benincourt was just searching for the highlight reel. He did a crane kick. But look, at the end of the day, it's sportsmanship. They know that they both delivered a phenomenal fight that's going to have a lot of people talking tomorrow morning in the world of mixed martial arts. La Bandera Boricua in full mast for the Florida Kid as he shares that moment with his gym. And uh, we'll be getting the official decision. No doubt about it. The question is, he win all three rounds. Let's find out. We go inside the house, Lupe Contreras. Los jueces Green y Toledo entregan tarjetas de 30 a 27. Judge Green in Toledo scored about at 30 to 27. Y el juez Green Jr. anotó 29 a 28. Judge Green Jr. scores at 29 to 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. Two solid. Jared Betancourt. Two solid Jared Betancourt now 5-0. and oh. As uh, we'll get it, call it 4-0. and oh. And one name to remember. We are going towards our main card at the top of the hour. You're in the right place. Friday night, Combate Global. Valentina Escobar, Yasmin Najera is next. My name is Ivan Tena. I'm 23 years old and I'm from uh, Tucson, Arizona. What I like the most about Tucson is just the culture. You know what I mean? We're, we're a tough city. It's super hot. You know what I mean? We're all tough. We're all fighters out there. And it's just, that's where I'm from, man. I started doing MMA as a kid. You know, my, my brother used to beat me up a lot. Kind of got sick of that. So I figured, you know, I should, I should start defending myself and learning how to fight. And uh, now I'm here. My first fight, uh, probably I was 14 years old. You know, I fought Coolidge, Arizona in some bar somewhere. You know, I fought this guy and, uh, the fight lasted like 30 seconds. It knocked him out. He was 18 years old. It was just wild, you know. My fighting style is uh, a lot of action. You know, I like to I like to box. I like to kick. I like to punish my opponent. You know, but that's not to say that I can't fight on the ground or wrestle. I can do it all. The most difficult obstacle really is just uh, getting the resources I need to train. You know, um, but now that I, I moved out to Phoenix, Arizona, and trained at the MMA Lab, I got everything. You know, and I'm really not lacking anything anymore. I'll fight whoever it takes, you know, I want to be the very best in the world one day, you know, so whoever, whoever it takes for me to get to that goal, that's who I want to fight. You know, I just don't like to lose, you know, and I feel like every time I go out there, I'm representing myself, my team, where I'm from, um, and if I were to lose, you know, that would all just go down the drain, and I'm not ready to shame everybody who supported me. I fight because, you know, I love martial arts, I love the discipline that it takes to be a competitor, and I feel like I have everything it takes to be the best. Welcome to Miami, as we are ready for the main card here for Combate Global. The preliminaries delivered yet again. I told you, you can't miss them. And I'm sure you didn't. And you didn't miss the glorious new Haula. Ready for a night out on South Beach or Wynwood or Brickle, whatever. Is that sway? It looks like sway, man. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Soak it all in. It may <laughs> smell a little bit like blood and sweat, by the way, after what we saw earlier this evening. We're glad you're with us. We have a spectacular main event. We are determining the pecking order in the featherweight division. Two big fights pitting USA versus Mexico coming your way. Ivan Tena, the undefeated fighter who has never seen a third round in his professional career against Roberto Romero Hernandez, undefeated in his last four fights. Carlos Rivera, the well-traveled, Knockout submission expert taking on Landry Ward, now 5-1, and one, looking to take the bad taste out of his mouth of his first defeat. Coming up here in moments, Valentina Escobar of Chile and Yasmin Najira of 
Mexico City. Glad you go to Max Perez, Rodolfo Roman. Let's go. Sabía que al final iba a terminar peleando MMA. Soy Valentina Escobar, tengo 24 años y vengo de Santiago de Chile. Pasé por una etapa muy difícil para mí donde vivía abuso. Lo superé por medio del deporte, se convirtió en mi pasión. Mi nombre es Yasmin Ájera, tengo 25 años y soy de la Ciudad de México. Vengo de un deporte de lucha y ahora con el striker me siento sólida, me siento fuerte y de ahí me siento muy potente. Ella es una chava aguerrida, tiene una trayectoria ya por detrás de otras disciplinas. No se va a dar por vencida fácil. Yo creo que voy a finalizar en el segundo round. Espero dejarlo todo en la jaula. Vengo a ganar, he luchado mucho por esto y no voy a dejar que nadie me lo quite. Soy también difícil de vencer y lo voy a dar todo. Vengo más fuerte que nunca y lo vas a sentir. Valentina, nos vemos en la jaula. Big fight as we go head to head, cana a cana. This is going to be a 120 pound catch weight. Both very young. Escobar 24, Nahera at 25. One inch taller is Escobar. She has a four inch reach advantage. She looked really impressive last time we saw it. Let's see if she will pick up from there against Nahera. Getting a first look at her here in Combate Global this evening. Time to rock and roll, which means we go to Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Valentina Escobar. Escobar is one tough cookie, and she talked about all the injuries that have set her back from her judo career. Stopped in judo because of some gruesome throws that kept her out a long time. Went to Muay Thai, and now to mixed martial arts. Training with Barrio Franklin, head coach Juan Carlos Pinto. We've talked about the emergence of the Chilean fighters, in particular in the women's ranks, where she also gets to train with Gloria Bravo. Yeah, but this time around, she took herself to Brazil to train with the Hon Vassal fight team and Mujeres Super Poderosas. Train with the folks in Brazil. She's a strong fighter, great striking, great wrestling. And just to see if she puts in the jiu-jitsu tonight. Now for her opponent. Su contraria, Yasmin Najera. Yasmin Najera. Unlike any fighter we have encountered here in Combate Global before. Nicknamed the Nina Arbol, the tree girl. Says she is in contact with nature. She also explored with a few things that she was <laughs> open about, she laughed about. We're not judging, but certainly, let's call her the Combate Hippie. <laughs> Maybe that's that's not, that's not right either. She is looking to make a name in mixed martial arts. She just goes to the beat of a different drummer, Rodolfo. Great strokes, great striking, has a boxing background. She's very bubbly, very friendly, but don't let, 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 let that deceive you. Of course, a lot of nerves are coming into play right now, lots of butterflies. She has to set that aside. She needs to keep very focused. Valentina is a strong opponent with great striking, so footwork will be very important in this fight for Yes. We'll know a lot more than we do now. Let's go to Lupe. Las reglas oficiales de la jaula, tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos de este duelo. A un peso pactado a 120 libras, this bout of the catch weight of 120 pounds. Los jueces son, the judges are, Mark Streisand, Richard Green y Richard Green Jr. Presentando en la esquina azul, vestida de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red, sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 120 libras y un cuarto on the scale. She registered an official 120 and one quarter pounds. En su segundo combate profesional, con récord de una victoria, she enters la jaula for the second time as a pro with a record of one victory. Representando a Santiago de Chile, Valentina. Escobar. Su oponente en la esquina roja, her opponent in the red corner, wearing black, vestida de negro. Su peso oficial, 119 libras, her official weight, 119 pounds. Igual que su rival, 
entra por segunda ocasión a la jaula con récord de una victoria, like her opponent. She too enters la jaula for the second time as a pro with a record of one victory. De la capital azteca, la ciudad de México, Yasmín Niña Árbol Nájera. El referí, Alana Vélez. Alana Vélez, yes. the third inside the jaula. All right, I gave you guys the instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch them up, go ahead. Come out fighting. Judge. 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 Valentina Escobar. Fight, you Fight, are you ready? Fight! Yasmin Najera, Najera in uh, the black, representing Mexico, facing Chile. Right from the start, look at Valentina. She's gonna pick up the pace. She's fast paced, very aggressive. Yasmin needs to do that footwork. She can't fall into the trap. See how she's coming in already, very vicious with that cross from Valentina. Valentina was so impressive in her MMA slash combate debut back in April of this year. Drawing a lot of plaudits for what she was able to do. Remember making the move from different combat sports. Does have a nice background. Valentina has a lot of power in those hands. She has that knockout power. Look at she sets up that jab. Lots of feint switching stance. Joe! Got one in there now, Yeah. Huh? Yasmin felt that one. And it just takes one, Max, to find, to, 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 to come to, to terms, okay, this is it. My butterflies are out. I just took this first shot. Let's get, let's get to the fighting. Now, and I was a boxing instructor, but Escobar showing her wherewithal with the fists. Great kick from Yasmin. And I had a last fought in May of 2021, victory by decision. Trying to get a fight afterwards, but she's had to deal with two surgeries, also with COVID. Oh, great rope hook from Valentina. Valentina, just great movement. Look at that shoulders. How head, she sets yes. the side head movement. Very confident. Setting apart. Positioning herself where to strike. Setting it up with that left. That jab. She switches stance so nicely. Very, very smooth. Yeah. Nahara just going side to side, keeping very active, but very easy for Escobar to track her down. And taking a lot less movement doing it. Valentina took on Fernanda Larios last time we saw her in La Jaula. And she walked in as the underdog, but boy, was she impressive. Look at that overhand right there. If that would have connected, this fight would have been done. These two would eventually project as strawweight fighters. Valentina Escobar looking to make the top 10 potentially with a win. And Yasmin knows the power that Valentina has. Look how she circles around. And that distance between that two, that space becomes wider and wider because Yasmin moves out. So she needs to work the angles with Valentina because she comes right at you and she does leave some of that opening in her chin. You just have to cut her. Anina Arbo with some good strikes here, starting to get into a better groove. See, she, she comes right in. As soon as she comes in, step that left foot to cut her off. I know it's easier said than done, but... <laughs> Show us. That's what it is. Oh, I, <laughs> trust me, I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> now I'm using a lot of energy just to move. Caught one on the way out. Overhand right from Escobar. Talked about Gloria Bravo. She trains with down in Chile. Talks about her, her life. She says, I, I live a little on the outskirts of Santiago. I go to the gym. I'm there all day. I come home and I sleep. Rinse and repeat. This is her life. Yeah, she has to come in. The Yasmin needs to come in. Valentina is pushing the pace. But she has to strike. She has to let them hand go, hands go. Too much backing up from Yasmin. Oh, look at Valentina just striking that power. She the clinch for a moment. Yeah, she tried to grab it, grab that that neck, bring her down and land the knee. Great exchange. Yasmin closing that right eye a little bit. Oh, and there's another good one. And now Nahida has got something to deal with. That eye is yeah, it's that right puffy. Eye. Yep. Yeah. 
You can see the damage done there, and Nahada trying to move away. Not, looks like her vision's okay. 30 she was, seconds. She was squinting there, there for some time. Va Valentina is just waiting for that chance to just corner her and land a flurry of punches. Overhand right, uh, doubling up. Oh, Nahida oh, goes oh. down. She's, Valentina's just picking on that eye. Great exchange here to land the, to finish the first round. We're gonna go to round two. Ooh. In between rounds, both fighters with something to talk about, something to build off, I'm sure. Escobar had a good start, had a good finish. In between, some nice moments there for Nahira. Valentina, though, just aggressive, great head movement, good boxing. Good footwork, switching the stance very fluidly. And Jasmine. Here yeah, and, and Valentina's corner said, look, she doesn't want to fight. She keeps she keeps backing up. But I was saying she was backing up that space in between them. He's paying wider and wider and wider. He's to bring it in. He's to fight. Throw the hands. Second round, second round. Back here inside of the hollow, ready for round two. And, and just to reiterate what we heard in the corner, Escobar's corner saying she doesn't want to fight, talking about Nahida. And by and large, she has not been that active. A lot of movement, look, look waiting for face. a counter punch. Look, look, she'll throw and she just goes back like, I don't know how many feet. <laughs> Escobar's just going to take the right angle here. Oh, just missed over the top. Nahida almost walked into that. See, she'll come in close and then just. It's like a four fight gap between the two of them. But that right hand has been cocked a couple times. You have to imagine it's going to find its target here. Listen, if, if that howler wouldn't have been there, Yasmin would have kept going back. <laughs> she literally got caught in it. That's that's why she was backpedaling. She needs to come in. Let the hands go. Nahada just doesn't have the, the background that Escobar does. Doesn't mean she can't win this fight. Got to be creative in finding a breakthrough and be very careful because if Escobar closes ground, he'll fall right into her hands. Little jab. Escobar gets the nod from all three judges on our official scorecard. It's almost as as soon as Valentina strikes, it could be the quick jab, something not even powerful. Jasmine just backs away. There we go. Now we're getting a little closer here. Back into the tie clinch again. Muay Thai is where she turned to after her comeback career started in judo. Oh, nice. Look at that. She's just picking apart. And again, Jasmine just running away. You got to come in. We asked these fighters what the best advice they have been given in their MMA career. And we haven't seen it yet, but Valentina Escobar said the best advice she was given is do jujitsu every day. That's what you tend to get from some of the fighters where they're so confident with their hands. Jujitsu practice, transition, transition, transition. Defense, defense. I mean, you just gotta do it as repetitive, repetition. As we look at the uh, stats, 69 punches for Valentina, Valentina and uh, Jasmine, 52. Even on the kicks. That's a takedown oh, there, there. Nahida. That's what she needed here to change the pace of the fight, to throw Valentina off. Single leg, doing well here. And she got her down. Watch the back of the head. Yeah, the warning there for Escobar with those elbows. Nahida's advice that she sticks by, in Spanish was, las victorias no te las suben a la cabeza y las derrotas no se dan a claven en la corazón. So the victories don't let them get to your head and the losses don't let them get into your heart. I like that one. Sure. Sounds better in Spanish. That, that, or at yeah. least the way I said it. That, that you can never fall in love with a victory. You know, that if every opponent's or, gonna be different, then your fight right, stop. will always be different. Stop. Fight! Yeah. And your losses, you could overcome it. You just gotta learn from your mistakes. Don't wash them away, learn from them, but don't let them haunt you. I think Yasmin now found out 
the recipe she needs to throw Valentina off, and that's change the levels, go to the ground. But she has to be cautious. She actually ran out of that exchange, ducking her head. Straight left. Now had combining a little better. It's been a much better round for the Mexican fighter. And she had that takedown, which is something she can hang her hat on. Interesting, Escobar with her judo background, and as well as what we've heard about her jujitsu, hasn't attempted anything to get this on the ground. Always striking first, though. She's trying to find something, but the, again, that gap, it just goes from two feet to seven feet. That gap between the two fighters. Jasmine busted there under the nose, or well, the bone, the nose busted open. She's bleeding there. Oh, trying to good catch body up. shots, yeah. Keep those hands up, though. Yeah, she's leaving it. Those are hanging low. Escobar set up with a jab, there another go. takedown. Get yeah. enough of these, one, Nahida yeah. is gonna have a chance to win this fight. She's having success in this position of wrestling. Two Take good takedowns in his second round. Make it three or two and a half. Good positioning of La Jaula. She's going to scoop her up if she has a chance. Valentina using her hips. Not taking this fight on the floor. Not some clinch work. Maybe some knees from Yasmin. Valentina throwing an asset judo that comes into play. Oh, maybe looking got for an awkward some position. shots. She may be saved by the, by the bell here, Max. Clubbing away on Nahena. Won't have time oh. to finish the job, though. Round three awaits. Things getting a little more interesting here after the second round. And will those takedowns sway the judges here? Look at this action from that second chapter of this fight. Valentina just finding it a chance, but then Yasmin throwing those hands, kicks. But what really made a difference for Yasmin in this round are the takedowns where she took her opponent down, grabbing that leg and taking her foe to the floor, where she landed some shots. She did have some control there. Threw in some body shots. Valentina just very aggressive, pushing the pace of the fight, dictating where it goes. Last round, Valentina, stay in your corner. Last round, stay in your corner. Time for the third round, and we await the scoring on the second round because that's obviously going to be. We'll change how the strategy for this third round unfolds. Yeah, that take those two two takedowns are going to make a big difference. Let's see how the judges saw it, though. Was it enough? Max Pretos, Rodolfo Roman, glad you could join us here on a Friday night for our loyal. Viewers, you know what it's all about, and it's always changing, but this has been a fantastic fight card throughout. Some big fights. We've got some big news that we're going to get to regarding next week here in a moment. And for those that are new, welcome aboard. You're in the right place if, you know, Friday nights for fighting. That's what I was told. Jasmine using those shoulders. Oh, well, they could open the scoring here. Max Valentina also takes this round as well. Okay. So those takedowns just weren't enough. I, a little surprised. Well, I, I like what Escobar okay, but what did, did you but do? But what did you do with those takedowns? Did you do something? Well, I, I, strike? I thought it was something. I didn't think Escobar did much in that second round. But she connected. She was, she was throwing in those hands, and they were they were efficient. So many people think, okay, the guy or the girl took her opponent down 20, 30 times. But what did she do? She she would. She or he or she can control your opponent for three, four minutes. But if you're just grabbing on, is that enough to impress the judges? Is that enough for you to win a fight? Are you damaging your opponent? You've convinced me, Rodolfo. <laughs> You've convinced me you should be a, uh, a judge. <laughs> just kidding. You're a great commentator, my friend. So Valentino Escobar with some breathing room. And maybe... If Nahera gets a little aggressive, the opening will be there oh, for Escobar. Oh, oh. Some good ja jabs. Yeah, Jasmine now using that jab. Great Short. shot from that, that right hand. Takedown gets flushed. We bet, I mean, we didn't know a lot about Nahera. I know we saw some tape and we were like, okay, there's some deficiencies there. Uh, but it, there's, yeah. there's something to build on I'll there. I'll tell you this, much improvement from that first fight, that pro fight that she had. 
and over time, in that first round, again, that gap when they exchanged became wider and wider, but as the fight developed, it got shorter and shorter. Now she does want to exchange. Big she knee. felt they were comfortable with the takedowns. Escobar wants a satisfied feeling. She wants to walk away with perhaps, hopefully a finish, a submission, something in a fight she was favorite to win. 24-year-old from Santiago de Chile. Nice kick landing on the outside left leg of Yasmin. Great stiff left from Valentina. Stick around, big main event coming up next. Ivan Tena, Roberto Romero. We also have Landry Ward, Carlos Rivera coming up as well, both in the featherweight division. Three ranked featherweights in action. And Tena, a very special fighter, that currently fight. ranked at fifth. He would be even higher if he had more fights. If he wins tonight, he will make a move. That fight's gonna be fun. Good exchange. Not much behind that kick by Nahida. Escobar firm with hers. Hops yeah, she... into action with that power jab. Valentina using those kicks to keep Yasmin at bay. Preventing her from coming in. Well, we saw it all over with Andrea Meneses, how Spanish MMA is on the women's side, really on both, improving and interest starts to raise. Same can be said with Chile. More and more fighters, and we've seen them all. And Claudio Quintana with an incredible knockout a couple months ago. Caroline Gallardo, who is uh, the number one ranked fighter at 115 pounds. Gloria Bravo, number three at the Adam Weights, and now Escobar. So three good female prospects, top 10 fighters. Escobar not there yet, but has a claim in about 30 seconds. I'm sure should be uh, in the drawing there when the rankings come out next month. Blocks that kick for him, and now had uh, nothing behind it. Now it looks like she's going to go the distance. Oh, Yasmin. Yeah, Final 10 seconds here. Now she's going for the takedown. That, yeah, but this point's yep. a little too late. That guillotine here for Valentina, perhaps. No, oh, really, just away. wanted to set up yeah. with some striking. Put on a little pain to wrap up the third yeah. round. And uh, Valentina Escobar on her way to improving to 2-0, and oh, both in combate. We'll be back with the official decision here from Miami. My name is Roberto Romero Hernandez. I have 22 years old, I'm Chihuahua, Chihuahua, Mexico. Empecé a practicar MMA por mi hermano mayor, ya que él era instructor de, eh, de artes marciales en un gimnasio. Pues poco a poco fue haciendo la transición al MMA y pues ahí me fue involucrando desde los 13 años. Bueno, pues mi estilo de pelea es un peleador aguerrido, un peleador este, que va hacia adelante. Eh, puedo pelear en cualquier área, de pie, en el piso. Me gusta pelear de pie, pero siempre empujando hacia la finalización. El año pasado nos reconocieron con el premio de la pelea del año a mi compañero se de Calle Montañez y a mí. Esa pelea fue una pelea de tres rounds, la verdad fue una pelea intensa, llena de acción en todo momento. Hubo knockdowns, este, hubo comebacks, entonces pues fue una pelea bien emocionante en todos los aspectos. Cuando me siento cansado, siento que estoy perdiendo una pelea, pues lo que me motiva a no tirar los guantes es primero que nada mi familia. Todas esas personas que están ahí afuera de la jaula, pues esperando a que yo salga con esa victoria o que al menos salga bien. Entonces, pues eso es lo que me, no me deja tirar los guantes. Pues yo creo que lo que me diferencia a mí de mis oponentes es la garra, la casta que, que saco en, en mis peleas. Eh, sinceramente yo me subo a entregar todo, a dejar ahí el corazón y pues es lo que venimos a hacer. Welcome back. Some applause from the fans, trainers, fighters that have gathered to see this 
Los tres jueces entregan tarjetas de 30 a 27. All three judges turn in scores of 30 to 27 in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision a favor de la vencedora por decisión unánime de Chile. Valentina Escobar. Valentina Escobar, victorious 2-0, and, oh, and now we wait to see what's next. Good to see Yasmin Najera can smile about it. She'll pick up the pieces. We'll be happy to see her back. Certainly she was an improved fighter from the last time we saw her. Campbell McLaren looking dapper inside the hollow, which is good news for Escobar. Main event time coming your way next. Ivan Tena, Roberto Romero, featherweight heavy hitters. Center stage in La Jaula next. Hello, Miami. It's main event time. Combate Global live on Paramount Plus and everywhere that you can hear us broadcast all over the planet. Record numbers with our Spanish language audience in Los Estados Unidos, and TUDN, and Univision, and Televisa in Mexico. And now here, Paramount Plus. Here we go. Ivan Tena. Canal 5, Televisa. All right, let's get a closer look at our fighters as we get you ready for the main course. I love martial arts. I love the discipline that it takes to be a competitor, and I feel like I have everything it takes to be the best. I like to punish my opponent, you know, but that's not to say that I can't fight on the ground or wrestle. I can do it all. Ivan! The fighting style is uh, a lot of action. Uh, a lot of punches and kicks and elbows coming his way. I think I'm gonna win this fight just because I'm better than my opponent. You know, I just don't like to lose. I think I'm more athletic than him. I just think that I'm a better fighter than he is. Let's just put on a show, man. Let's do it. Antenna coming out. Guy who's done so well in the amateur ranks, training with the MMA lab with Benson Henderson and Sean O'Malley. We've talked about his educational prowess. Bachelor's in mechanical engineering from Arizona State. Twice on the Dean's list. I say it over and over again, Rodolfo, because I can't believe it's reality here. This guy's amazing. An engineer, a mixed martial artist. Engineering is a hard career, man. <laughs> he said it earlier on in the, in the uh, interview. How'd you, how'd you balance both? No sleep. <laughs> yeah, they call him in Ingeniero, Ingeniero in Spanish. His nickname, though, is Titan. What about his opponent, Roberto Romero? Para mí no solo es una pelea, sino es un encuentro de disciplinas, es un encuentro de dos gladiadores. Yo me imagino un escenario de mucha acción. Yo me considero un peleador técnico que va hacia adelante. Me gusta pelear de pie, pero siempre empujando hacia la finalización. Para mí representar a México es uno de los mejores orgullos, que levanten sus colores, digan el lugar donde naciste, incluso cuando muchas personas ni lo conocen, entonces sinceramente lo voy a seguir haciendo con mucho gusto. Voy a ganar esta pelea porque estoy más preparado, me siento en mejor condición, vamos a dar una guerra arriba de la jaula y pues que gane el mejor. His 4-2 record doesn't really do him justice. He has been undefeated in his last four fights. And in those last four fights, October of last year, fight of the year in Combate Global, a majority draw with Zed Montañez. September, first round, KO punch to the body, victory over Carlos Tenorio. August, a month earlier, beat Michael Martinez, TKO punches in the first round. So in three months, two first round knockouts, and the fight of the year. This guy is a very fun fighter to watch. But defense, defense is going to be the key here against Ivan Tena. Ivan Tena is a patient fighter. 
So for Romero, who is an offensive fighter, he has to play the opposite here if he wants to take this fight. Against Zed, he took plenty of shots. And he even said it himself, I think the difference would have made it and I would have potentially won that fight if I would have taken it to the ground. Work some of my defense. It's going to come in handy here against the Titan Tenna. Well, Rodolfo and I have been texting all week about this, and uh, we were really excited. We were just hoping there wouldn't be any complications, any issues, injuries, etc. We're in the clear as we go head to head, gotta a gotta. Look at these guys: Tena, 23; Romero, 22. Tena, a massive featherweight at six feet tall. The reach is all even. Both guys make weights. A limit at 146 pounds. We're ready to go. Enough of our yapping. It's time for Lupe Contreras to do some talking. Este es el duelo estelar de esta noche. Tres vueltas, división, peso, pluma. This is the main event. Three rounds in the featherweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are, Lorenzo Toledo, Mark Streisand y Richard Green. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido del tricolor al mexicano, rojo, blanco y azul. Introducing the blue corner, wearing the colors of the USA, red, white and blue. Su peso oficial, 145 libras y tres cuartos. His official weight, 145 and three quarter pounds. Entra la jaula, invicto a nivel profesional en cuatro combates tonight. He enters la jaula undefeated in four pro bouts. Representing the PHX, Phoenix, Arizona, Ivan, el Titan Tena. En la esquina roja, vestido de verde con blanco in the red corner, wearing green with white. Sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 145 libras on the scale. He registered an official 145 pounds. Esta noche, entra a la jaula con la intención de brindarle a su oponente su primer derrota profesional y un récord de cuatro victorias, dos derrotas y un empate tonight. He enters la jaula with the intent of giving his opponent his first pro defeat and a record of four victories, two losses and one bout even. Fighting out of Irvine, California. Y puro Chihuahua, México, el charro negro, Roberto Romero Hernández. El referee, Marcos Pérez. Marcos Pérez, the third inside, La Jaula. Must respect from these two. No hijinks. They know what it's all about. Both uh, with big goals, big dreams. I know they'll be quicker to fulfill with the victory. It is Romero in green and white. Wow, Grabs the hips and drops Tana. Wasting no time, Max. This is a fast pace right from the start. Romero going to the ground. Drags it back into <laughs> the deep end. But Romero oh, he here, remember, Ivan Tena has excellent wrestling, but in his professional career has depended on his striking where he feels very comfortable, but we never haven't, we haven't really seen none of his groundwork because he hasn't needed it. Tena, April, second round KO of Geraldo Almonte, October of last year, Timothy Kuamba, sub, rear naked choke in the first round. Prior to that, knockout in the first, as it's a low blow. And going back to 2019, a fight in combate, Beat Dominic Tim via TKO punches in the first. So three knockouts, one submission in his four professional bouts, 3-0 and oh in combate. He, yeah, he tried to go for that spinning back kick. Oh, that's on the leg. It's more in the quad area, right? That was uh, well off. Ten is okay, he doesn't waste too much time. He clipped it. Oh, big kick by Tena. Romero eats it. Look at these guys, yeah, but you as advertised. Romero, though, he did his homework, and, and he did work on that defense. If you were to look back at that fight that he had with Zed, you know, he was eating the shots, and he'll fire back. But here, that defense is coming in very, very handy. 
Both making contact. Romero has yeah. caught Tana's attention yeah. with the takedown. And look at that oh, shot. brought it down. With that shot. Dropped him in the body shot. Tana's never felt this before. Down on his back. Man. And Romero said it himself. Like every Mexican, we love to hit that liver shot. And that took down Tana. That body shot. Great strategy for Romero. Whatever he's devised, it was the right decision. He continues to throw and connect. Jab. Romero setting up that jab to connect the body once again. Tena looking Tena. a little groggy yeah, from that. Tena. We've never seen him with that, that kind of challenge early on, but he's taking it. Tena needs to keep those elbows down to protect his rib area because Romero is seeing that opening. Oh, another good shot, and he's working that body with Look his hands, with his legs. That right side of Tena, Romero has been connecting with the fist and the legs. Now the lead leg. Oh, good, Tena good right hand by Tena, yeah. but Romero responds back another to the body. One. He's a hit. he's hit that place about three, four times already. And it's come with power. Upstairs, oh, Romero with a beautiful opening round. Tena's just trying to catch up. Not there yet, he can. Ooh. Another shot to the side of the head. Beautiful. Back, Back to the body. Dana's starting Another to really one. feel it. Man, great head movement. Look how he His corner under. says for 10, I need you to be longer. He's got to get Romero out of that sweet spot. There's a good punch there by Dana. Punch. He's got to protect that body. Yeah. Dana needs to use that jab to keep Romero at bay. Romero keeps coming in like a shark. Oh, oh he need him! Square on the top of the head! Now Dana can unleash! Romero wow. walks right into that. These guys are amazing, taking a ton of punishment. Only three minutes Still fighting. In. This is only three minutes in, Max. Dana again. Both these guys look groggy, but they still do what they, <laughs> the only thing they know how to do, and that's fight. Great. Oh, another, another one into the shot body. To the body! These are shots that would <laughs> knock your intestines out, but Tenna's just taking it. Uh, he's breathing hard, trust me, Max. See how but, he has that mouth open? I mean, but these are the kind of punches that a normal person yes. would not be able to breathe for 30 seconds. The reason why they call it the Titan. Wow, just incredible stomach strength. I don't know how many more of those you can take. Short combination for Tenna. But Tenna's connecting with that one-two combination, and look at... Now Romero to the ground. Great spin Spins around that's that wrestling. Catches, catch can. Man, and that's... And the corner says stay on top. Maybe a chance to take a Maybe breath. A spin around right here. Guillotine. Knee, knee, knee. He's gonna go for that knee in the body area, the rib area. Under a minute to go here, round one. Roberto Romero is training with the Team Oyama, home to world champion Carlos Esparza. Body Tena. shot. On the other side now, and Tana with oh, MMA Lab. As you mentioned, go, Max, circle, 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 studs. Underhook and turn Come on, let's go. These are two well hey, you got trained seconds. athletes. Oh, big oh, left hand man. by Romero. I love how Romero just comes together. A little Mike Tyson is to him, huh? Knee by Tana. Tennis expanding the distance, which is it playing in his favor, what his corner said. Some blood out of the nose, as you can see, for Romero. Took that big man combination. This is going to be a tough round to call. It was a roller coaster ride for both fighters. Unbelievable, beautiful opening round. Man, I think <laughs> Romero might win another fight of the year if he continues like this. This guy it's only the is the first round. Let's take a look at the action. Right from the start, Romero working the body, one, two shots. It was actually the leg. It wasn't even the body the shot. The liver set it up, and though. set it up, and then the kick that brought him down. And then Tenna was just striking. Romero just chasing his opponent like a shark smelling blood. Look at that boot. That's just plain textured Mike Tyson right there when he moves to the side with the head movement, working the body. That's one, two, body shot, body shot. Man, what a first round. Then that knee that Romero ate was taken to the ground, but he lived to survive to the next round.
We knew this fight was going to be good, but that first round exceeded all expectations. And we still have more to go. These are two guys that don't go the distance. Remember, we told you that about Tena. He's never seen a third round in his professional career. Uh, Roberto Romero Hernandez, he hasn't seen one in a long time. Wow. Moisture there inside the howler. Don't, don't get the leather. Yeah, don't get the leather wet. <laughs> That's pricey, man. <laughs> Very designer, Matt. What a fight. That's only the first round. Great game plan by Romero Hernandez. Yeah, worked, he worked the body. The body, the body, and the body. And set it up. I, and he, it was a great round across the board, but he got caught with that knee, and that allowed Tenna. But that's what happened, especially, uh, you know, this is MMA, and when you have that type of boxing stats, you could run into a knee, you could run into a kick. Folks, this is What's the fifth here? and seventh ranked featherweights in the company. Water into the canvas, ready, and wipe that ready, out. Fight. Now it's clean, we're ready to go. We want to stop the momentum, right? To start off the yeah, second round. Great lead, kick to the lead nice leg of Tenna. And Ooh. both unload Great, from the jump again. Strikes, kicks. Yeah. Another body yeah. shot with the leg. Ivan Tenna in the red, white, and blue. It's USA, Mexico, folks. His body, body, body. That's what he's doing, Max. And Romero has had success with it, but Tena looking for that knee. That knee served and him well. Romero followed it up with a save. Split in that first round. Tena getting one of the judges, judges two and three, going Romero. I thought it was Romero, but I knew yeah. Tena ended very well. Man, can they keep this pace? Oh, yeah. Oh. They, they surely can. Both these guys have just great cardio. They're persistent. Aggressive. Not as precise early on in the second round. Big left. Tenna, then he follows up with the overhand right. Romero just eats these punches. Yeah. yeah. And that's the same thing that he had with, my, uh, with Zed. One type yes. body shot. But a lot more defense this time around. Changing levels, Romero. Trying to get in close. See, Tenna, very good defensively. He'll take some. He's taking a lot into his stomach. Doesn't seem like it's bothering him, but you know it has to. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, Tenna hasn't attempted to explore the ground game. 109 punches in seven minutes. Less than seven minutes. Can you throw that much in five minutes? <laughs> Can't even eat that many Doritos in seven minutes. Or Skittles. <laughs> Romero close it, jab, another body shot. Some blood, I believe it's Romero's blood on the chest of Tenna. Great, great work. Yeah. Tenna's corner saying you can't eat those, m m that many body shots. Well, yeah, he has he has to keep those elbows down. He has to crunch down like if he's like if he's doing a crunch, you know, like an ab crunch. Yeah. And every time that he that, that Romero comes in, he has to switch left, right, left, right. Both fighters with blood out of the nose now. Good left hook, short from Romero. Catches the jaw of Tenna. Tenna, root one, backs off Romero. And Tenna needs to use that jab to keep him at bay because Romero is wow. the one that's, he's, he's dictating this fight. He comes right at him. Look at uppercut from Romero. And Romero's on track for yeah. 300 punches in this fight. And maybe four. Uppercut into the clinch. It's not quite worked out for Tenna. You get the feeling he might find that rhythm. Romero's making sure, and he's doing his very best, that it doesn't happen. He gets he gets a spurt, right? He'll, he'll throw in, he'll lead it off with a jab, and then Romero would just come right at him and work the body. Four jabs, Romero. Now the kick. leg. I mean, these two guys are starting to get beat up. Tenna's taken a ton of punishment. The volume of punches from Romero. Romero is just persistent, connecting. Turn, turn, hold him on the wall. Turn. This is a, a display of what Combate Global is all about. The beginning of these careers, these young fighters. Many years from now, we, these will be household names. But right now, they're figuring it out. But the talent's there, and you see them get better yeah. all the time. Take down the first here for Tenna. Now we're seeing Tenna's groundwork. The first time I've seen it in here in Combate Global because he finishes his opponents. Former freestyle state champion wrestler. 
Pull him back out. Pull him back out. And that Pull wrestling out. background, Pull him out. you know, it's yeah. in you for the rest of your yeah. life, yeah. You, yeah. especially for a state yeah. champ. It's your bread and butter. Romero said he worked very hard on his defense when knowing he was going to bite Tenna. Defense, it doesn't look like he's worked on his defense stand up, but certainly here is a knee. He had a knee. Yeah, no, he was waiting for a knee, and he had him in that position. Second round flying by. Big kick, Tenna starting to close the gap. Like the first round, finishing strong in round two. Romero puts his head down. Like the old Mexican boxing champs, when they just put forehead to forehead and went to town. Wow. Let's go, Tom, diving snapples. Just big right They just get right at each other and just smack each other, huh? Wow, these two are going to be sore tonight, tomorrow morning, maybe even worse. Good left hand by Romero, got blocked. Second round coming to a close. It wasn't as good as the masterpiece first round, but it was pretty darn oh. good. And we're going to round three. Wow. Woof, exhale. This one, you win this one, you got everything. You got to keep pushing, right? I think that's what the Romero corner is saying. Win this round, you're gonna win this fight. Slow your breathing up. Let's take a look at that action for that second round. Body shot once again from Romero, working the body. And that straight jab. Back and forth, but Tana did sneak in a right hand, or left hand, that struck Romero. But these boys are just swinging. At one point, they just came head to head, like two rams clashing, just connecting. Blow to blow. Of course, Romero keeping on with that work to the body, which has been very effective for him. Great positioning for that boxing work, footwork. We are back for the first time in his career. Ivan Tena is going to the third round. Obviously, Romero did it in the uh, majority draw with Zed Montañez. Let's see how he goes in the third round. You knew at some point Tenna would go to a third round. It happens today. Kick upstairs catches Romero. We await the scores of the second round. Tenna threw in that knee right to start the fight in this third round. Another knee. Oh, another big body shot. I've lost count of how much shots Tenna has taken to the body. Well, Tenna's going to be black and blue around his body. Again, he brushes it off like it's no big deal, but those have to be leaving a mark. Two really tough dudes. Built for this. Love it. Good volume again from Romero. He has started every round well. And Romero just needs to keep working the body. It's been, but has been. He has had much success in this fight. Uh oh, Tenna's backing up. Romero, five, six strikes. Tenna needs to use that jab. Then, oh, back to the body. Shots. Look at the uh, open scoring. Romero won the round, round two across the board. Remember, Tenna got the nod from first judge in round one. Tenna needs to throw those kicks. Tenna Follow looks it groggy. Struggling right now, rubbing his nose. Romero just walks through everything. Hey, we got press in forward. Forward, forward, forward. Great forward. fight so far from these guys. And they, they've been pretty consistent with the pace, Max. Nice body shot from Tenna. Oh, another great jab. left hand. Good right hand from Tenna. Kick to the body. But it's just one strike at a time for Tenna, where Romero's doing two, three at a time. It's just countering. Every time Romero hits, Tenna follows back. But Romero does get the better hand with those body shots. You heard the corner from Romero. Keep your hands up. Don't get sloppy, because any opening, any mistake is vital here. You cannot make any mistake as either of these guys 
could finish it. Well, there's blood out of the nose of Tenet. There's also a big cut as he comes over the top with that right hand. I mean, there has been strikes from both fighters that would knock down lesser men across the board. These two guys remain upright. That's a two and a half to go. Tenet's trying to find a second win here in this third round. He noticed that Romero is keeping those hands down. Could be a sense of exhaustion. Tenet's growing. Romero's eyes say that he is feeling it, yeah. but his what he's doing says something else. That's why he can't get sloppy. Again, any mistake is vital. Two minutes to go. Dan, oh! Big right hand. oh! Big left hand, pardon me. Corner trying to urge Tana on. He has less than two minutes to go if he wants to win this one. And he threw in an elbow in there as well. Buckle up, folks. These last two minutes are probably going to be insane. Fighting to stay unbeaten, Ivan Tena. Fighting to stay unbeaten in his last five fights for Romero Hernandez. Romero Fighting for their countries. Needs, Romero needs to stay crisp with his boxing, keep his hands up, can't get sloppy, because Tena will capitalize on it. Hey, Rodolfo, that big cut on the right cheek of Tena. I mean, it is deep. Yeah. And I don't know how you get a cut like that. Just a soft part of your soft part of your cheek opened up. You know, different people are built different ways, and some of us just bleed easily. Others, we can take a couple of shots before you start bleeding. One minute to go here inside La Jaula. The main event has been one of the best fights we have seen in Combate Global. I know I'm a prisoner of the moment. Shoot me. Hey, but these are the facts. It seems like we see a fight of the year every week. This one, there's something different about it. This is just great. It's just back and forth. Oh, big body shot, Tenna. Tenna may have won this third round, but won't help him in the scorecards. May split the decision. He has to won't finish win him. He has to finish this if he wants to take this win. He's got to finish it in 25 seconds. And how do you finish this Highlight Rocky Rio. Stallone type character in Romero? He can't get back it up. He has less about approaching the 10 seconds. A combate classic. 10 seconds to go. Wow. Left hand by Romero. Romero to the body. That has been his calling oh, card all night. <laughs> what a fight. Unbelievable. Two real champions in there, but only one will have their arm raised. We'll be back to find out who. Lobo! Mi nombre es Carlos Rivera, tengo 28 años de edad y vengo de la Ciudad de México. La vuelta a la tortilla prácticamente al mexicano. La verdad es que estoy contento, me preparé muy bien y para mí es un orgullo representar a, a toda mi bandera. Uh, bonito, paso por atrás y es recto de derecha entró. My Andrew Ward, I'm 25 years old, from Fort Worth, Texas. I fight because I just love competition and I feel like fighting is like the most, most pure form of competition there is, you know. It's, one on one, man versus man. Me considero un peleador dentro de la jaula, agresivo, fuerte, decidido, y afuera de la jaula una persona tranquila, una persona noble. Inside and outside the cage, I just consider myself to be a tenacious fighter. Whatever obstacle is in my way, I'm willing to, you know, put my chin down, bite down on my mouthpiece, and uh, go through it. Creo que va a ser una pelea donde vamos a hacer choques de estilos. Él es striker, yo también soy striker. Entonces, que va a ser una, una gran guerra. As long as it lasts, it's going to be fireworks and highlights. Lo puso en su lugar rápidamente, en la lona, donde lo quiere tener. Yo creo que voy a ganar esta pelea porque trabajé muy duro. Tengo, traigo otra mentalidad diferente. Traigo una división más arriba. Y me siento contentísimo con ese nuevo peso. Vamos a dar un buen show. Eso es lo que esperamos todos y lo van a ver. Todo el mundo lo va a ver. Buen codazo ahí. And the message to my opponent is the same as always. The green go is coming. The incredible action on a Saturday morning for those on the East Coast, for those on the West Coast settling in. Bright eyed and bushy tailed, I'm sure, for this one. Time Después for the official de tres announcement. vueltas de mucha más acción, el juez Toledo anotó. 29 a 28 a favor de Tena after three rounds of much more action. Judge Toledo scores at 29-28 in favor of Tena. El juez Streisand 
29 a 28 a favor de Romero. Judge Streisand scores it 29-28 in favor of Romero. Y el juez Green anotó 29 a 28. Judge Green scores it 29 to 28 in favor of the winner. By way of split decision a favor del ganador. Por decisión dividida. El Charro Negro. Roberto Romero Hernandez. 10 won that third round, but as we saw with the official cards, it was a mountain too tall and so much respect between these two. 10 has got to be devastated, but we look forward to seeing him again. It's hard to stay unbeaten in this sport. We still have some more action coming your way, also in the featherweight division. Carlos Rivera, El Lobo. The Lone Star Kid, Landry Ward, next as we put a bow on an amazing evening. Unforgettable Friday night from Miami inside the studios where La Jaula awaits. One more fight to go. Before we call it a night, you don't have to go to bed, but you can't stay here. We'll be back again Friday, next <laughs> Friday, another superb fight. And we'll find out. We're going to set up a world title fight in the Bantamweight division next week. Maybe something in the featherweight. Landry Ward, he was an undefeated fighter. Last time we saw him losing to Jair Perez. Now he's got Carlos Rivera. He looks to get back to his winning ways. Lupe Contreras, if you will. Entrando a la jaula, Carlos Rivera. This is the 21st professional fight for Carlos Rivera, who has fought at Bantamweight. He was uh, a champion at the Bantamweight ranks. He uh, has had a little bad stretch here, but he has put in the work. He has rejuvenated many parts of his game, and he feels like he could be the fighter who at one time started it's 6 and 0, 9 and 1. I mean, he's been fighting for a decade and he's still just 27 years of age. Yeah, going back in 2017 when he took on Levi Saul Marroquin when he fought uh, for that Copa Combate, it was a one rounder. And then the last time we saw him was against Jose Avalos back in August of 2017. Landry Ward. Landry Ward, we know him, we love him from Fort Worth, Texas. I'll never forget a couple fights ago he came out bringing attention to the struggle in Cuba as a, as a Cuban American, it meant a lot to me. So Landry Ward, much appreciated. He cut a nice phrase in his interviews, and here he is. He's dedicated himself to this sport by moving to Texas. He says he misses his family and friends, but he's focused on this career, and he's moved to Florida. That's a sacrifice that he has made, but he trains with a game, a camp, the Sanford, or now a Killcliffe FC. Coming off that first defeat, that changes you as a fighter. I've seen some fighters that have those defeats. They just go on winning streaks nonstop. He knows what he has to do. Don't put pressure on himself. As far as getting that knockout, just feel out the fight. Fight. That's what you like to do. Let it be organic. Let it come out naturally. Head to head, cara a cara. Uh, we can see Rivera's actually ticked up to 28 years of age. Landry Ward at just 25. He is six foot one. Rivera is six feet even. The reach, inch and a half in the advantage of Landry Ward. We are in the featherweight division. Both guys making weights. Time to go back for the final time tonight to Lupe Contreras. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Tres vueltas, división peso pluma. We continue with much more action. Three rounds in the featherweight division. Los jueces son the judges are Richard Green Jr., Lorenzo Toledo, y Mark Streisand. Presentando en la esquina azul, presenting the blue corner. Vestido de negro con verde y rojo, wearing black with red and green. Su peso oficial, 145 libras, his official weight, 145 pounds. Este peleador agresivo y tenaz entra a la jaula en su vigésimo primer combate con 14 victorias y 6 derrotas. This aggressive and tenacious fighter enters la jaula for the 21st time as a pro with 14 victories against 6 losses. De la Ciudad de México, Carlos. Lobo Rivera. En la esquina roja, 
vestido de azul con blanco, en the red corner, wearing blue with white, sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 145 libras y un cuarto. On the scale, he registered an official 145 and one quarter pounds. A nivel profesional, mantiene un récord de cinco victorias y solo una derrota. As a pro, he maintains a record of five victories against one lone defeat. Fighting out of Fort Worth, Texas. Here comes the gringo, the lone star kid, Landry Ward. El referee, Alana Belli. Alana Belli is the third inside right, La Hala. the instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up, go ahead. Come out fight. Judge. 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 Carlos Rivera, 15 years in the game. Fight, are you ready? Fight, are you ready? Landry Ward. Fight! We are underway. Ward in the blue and the white. The uh, knockout, which he's worked so hard for, has eluded him. Yeah. Maybe tonight's the night. Maybe, maybe. But again, he has to just just have fun in there. This is this is a sport. You train to win. Of course, we all want that highlight reel, but just let it, it, let it come out naturally. After losing to Jair Perez, which was his first defeat, Landry Ward, a very tough bounce back fight against the very t talented, very experienced Carlos Rivera. He's had a couple bad results go his way. His last fight was in March. Did get a victory in that one. Prior to that, two defeats in 2021. This is his third fight in combate. He is 0-2 in his combate fights. One of those fights all the way back in 2017. He's got the back of Landry Ward. He's got the triangle in. Something in there. Now Landry doing what he has to do, looking away so he won't get caught in that rear naked choke, but... He's turning away, arm is off the neck. And What's Lobo, he doing here, Rodolfo, no, to get and him Lobo off? just wrapping him apart. Toes out of the cage, Carlos, toes out of the cage. He, does, he, he's, he has that body lock. Of course, that does cause... Reda with a Some good, tight, tight area. squeeze going. He's trying to go for that standing rear naked. But Landry doing exactly what he needs to do, hanging Toe on to that, that wrist, hand. not a, allowing him to that get the case, full rear naked. But Lobo, uh, he's been warning Rivera. Rivera yeah. is playing with fire. Now what, what, what Landry doesn't needs to prevent is taking this to the floor, where we'll have more of an impact from Lobo to wrap and keep that, that wrap leg. But look look how Lobo has that foot in between the, the howla. Well, that is plugged in. Yeah. Right into the socket. So for Landry Ward, the temptation to maybe drop this to the ground could Push be a the mistake. Hip out. Of course, you have to be cautious. Grab those wrists because you don't want to have them. But that, well, a warning that for that. Oh, there, boy. Oh, oh, what's going on now? Landry can last some hammer fist from this position. And oh, uh, Rivera could have an, an arm, arm bar if... If it's available, or maybe he can switch oh, stop, around for. <laughs> Alan Abella warned it here. It was getting awkward there for a minute, but we didn't know. You don't see that that often. Back to the center of the howler. Good right hand there by Ward. Big kick by Rivera. And unlike Jair, Max Lobo is the same height, almost the same height as Landry. So this is a fight that Landry could could really benefit from. Lobo attempted again for the ground. That was shut down. Wrist control here by Ward. Sort of slow out of the gates. Got to give credit to Rivera, who was shot out of the Yeah, he tried to go for that standing rear naked chill, but true thoroughbred there. Ward did what he had to do, turning his head. Right back to where we started, the arm bar attempt. Ward drops his hips. Rivera's been incredible in finishing fights. 14 professional wins, six via TKO, six via submission. So he's balanced it very well. They're just so long, both of these guys. Yeah, they look like lightweights, even uh, possibly middleweights, or welterweights, pardon me. Landry here, uh, he lands some shoulder shots. There he gets some elbows. Landry Ward able to get and closer to the ground, which brings Rivera within reach. Rivera, though, trying to pull up those legs, maybe get a triangle. 
attempting to grab a wrist to go for an arm bar. One minute to go here in La Hala, final fight of the night. Bit of a chess match. Rivera doesn't want to trade with Landry. He's the one that's been pushing this fight to the floor. Featherweight rankings. We saw number five, Ivan Tena, lose to number seven, Roberto Romero. Landry Ward is number eight. Triangle attack. Arm bar. Arm bar. 35 Concussion. seconds. Needs to pull up, push up real quickly. Really good uh, defense of the uh, submission here from Ward. Very good. Another break from Abeles. Probably good news for Ward. Both come out here all scratch. Messed up a bit. Landry needs to keep that defense radar on. Oh, Rivera got caught in. Oh, he got caught coming in. Ward needs to come in though if he wants to finish it. That could have been his chance. Another shot. Ward upstairs. Oh. He's going to run out of time, but Rivera is a little worse off than he was just a few seconds ago. Okay. I think R Rivera felt some of that ward leather yeah. right towards the end of that round because he came down a little woozy. He nodded saying no, but he felt some of that impact. It felt like Rivera took a lot of energy and he's got look a that nice, right there, got yeah, mouse. Got a little mouse under the left eye. Let's take a look at the replay here. Rivera going for the takedown. Attempting to go. It seemed like this fight was going to finish off quickly as he wrapped around that figure four body lock, attempted that rear naked choke from the top, but Landry found a way to escape, connecting with that shot that rocked Rivera right towards the end of the first round, but he lives to see it in the round. Landry Ward, had to defend most of that first round, but he Man. got one off in the end. There is the proof. He came so close of getting that TKO victory. It may set things up here in round two for him. Remember those long legs. Landry Ward. This is his fourth fight with Combate. Now he gets to do some striking. Lost to Jair Perez in April of 2022. Unanimous decision over Jumar Roa oh, in October. Oh, right hand. Also beat Alfredo Ruelas in July of last year. Single leg, Ward able to slip out. He, this time he's able to throw Rivera off his back. Rivera's game plan is here to take this fight to the ground, where he feels very confident. As for Ward, he likes to let go. Finishing off that first round just boosted up his confidence that he can finish this fight. But it has to go back to the feet. And if Anna LaBella doesn't see any action, it will benefit Ward, because he'll get this fight right to the feet again. Into the guard of Rivera. Rivera wins round one. Probably the right call. He right. had a great start, and he had Ward on the ropes. Now that Bennett yeah, didn't see much action, he stood both men up. Now this is going to benefit Ward. Yeah, he wants to throw. Look at him, ready to ready to pounce. Ward needs to have oh, the oh, spinning back fist on the money. Yeah, but it was blocked. Good head positioning from Ward. Because he has to keep, he has to defend it. He's going to keep at him. This is a great game plan by Rivera, especially with the first round in the ledger. He has to make sure that those hips are always a greater position to block him from taking him down. And also use the jab to keep him at bay. Maybe teep him to push him off. That's for Elova. I mean, he's doing what he has to do. He knows that he's had much success on the ground. And we see Landry from his clinch position where he lands some elbows. You don't even see him coming. Maybe some shoulder shots from this position, some knees. Good positioning of the Haula there from Ward switching, keeping that guard now, bringing it to the center of La Haula to exchange. Look at that over that right hand. 
Oh, breaking down that those long legs of Rivera. Ward just can't get an overhand right. Not much on it. Ward, Ward is keep, locked in. Ward should keep working on those legs. Break him down, because Lobo's going to go straight down to the floor. Same old, same old, but Ward's got him he got those locked hooks in there. there. Yeah, he got those hooks there that blocked him from finishing off the takedown. Some foot stomp from Rivera to finish the rankings discussion. Ward is number eight. Wants to stay in the top 10. A loss here that probably does that for now. Says a lot how competitive this division is. Locked in, underhooks. Ward trying to get something behind those knees. Minute 30 to go here in round two. And now I get to the ground. But Landry needs to push off those hands, get them off. Land some hammer fists, some elbows. Minus one. Blue, toes in the cage. Oh, again, Alan had been warning Rivera and he deducted a point. Unbelievable. Because he kept grabbing on to the huge. Yeah, that's going to be a huge difference here in this fight. Minutes ago, he warned her not to put those toes in La Hala and he kept doing it. Can't use that for your advantage. And it is a huge advantage with leverage, with balance. Ward wants to throw. He had that one chance at the end of the first round where he damaged Rivera. He's, Rivera's been smart not to let him get into those quarters again. Or rather, that, that point deduction could be a big, big difference here. Stop, stop, up. Alan Abella's getting frustrated, but the right call. Maybe Ward now, just like the end of the first round, wants to fire at least one off. If, he, if Ward wants to finish this fight, he needs to use their jab to keep him away. Another takedown, but now he's into now the mouth. Now that mount. Rivera in trouble. Thankfully, he's up against the clock. Maybe enough for Ward to win the round. Time will tell. All right, that was minus one. Final round of the fight, Ooh. final round of the night. Rivetta flying out of his corner, misses Ward. Now can Ward avoid being taken down? Ooh. Spinning back fist misses by a mile there. Yeah, second attempt, he did that in the second Ooh, too Good right well. hand by Ward. Nice cornering him. This is a good spot for Ward. Oh! oh. Uh, I wanted to take the front. Ward, Ward will take it, Yeah, it. sure. He says, I, I But he needs I to scoop him here. in. Scoop him into the center of La Jaula. He's just looking for scoring points. Yeah. Grinding that forearm into the forehead of Rivera. Trying to bust him open Ric Flair style. <laughs> Ric Flair. Who said he's not done, by the way? Of course he said that. <laughs> We're lucky to still have him. There's a camera shot from outside the howl and you can see what, you know, good elbow. It can get you from anywhere. Into the guard. Fish eye angle. Alan Abeles looking on. He's separated these guys multiple occasions. Interesting decision for Ward to go down. Maybe oh, he, he has an opportunity to break him down just a bit. Landing in some shots here from this position. Maybe work some of the body as well. Landing those uh, shots in the rib area. And now he might even get them. Well, he nearly Side them control. Out, yeah. Better position for Ward. Now Rivera is in uh, a spot look, of bother. Look at the toes of Rivera oh. and the howler, though. Remember, he did get that point deduction in the second round. And uh, even yeah, the, the corners point in that yeah. corner. I mean, why not? And another foot in that cage. It's going to be another point deduction, and that's game, set, match for Rivera. All right, this is reward wants it if he wants to win this fight on the floor. And look at the open scoring coming up here, Max. We might be heading to <laughs> with the point deduction. Yep. That means Ward is up all across the board. So Rivera's edge wiped away by that point deduction. It would have been 19-19 across. So Ward wins the second round, according to all three judges. It's a great opponent to win, but Rivera doesn't want to he be has a to spin stepping around. Ball. Ward needs to spin around right here. Wrap those Gets legs. Some shots to soften him up. 
But Rivera's going to try to grab that wrist and roll over. See how he's trying to roll over there? Ward not allowing it, though, keeping in that left hand. Steady. But progress for Ward to get the back for the first time. Some elbow right there. Opportunity of some shots. Well, it ends like this. Ward's going to win the fight. He has been the aggressor as uh, it has been Rivera with his back to La Jaula, the duration of round three. Rivera with those long legs attempting to, to wrap him around. Oh, oh, oh he did oh, a ton. Oh, 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 yeah. Wait, Another know. point deducted. And that is. And next it, one gets DQ'd. And Landry, that's music to Landry Ward's ears. It takes a little bit of the starch out of this fight. Landry Ward has to know it. Ah, that was ah, it. He might get, look, it's right there. Oh, no, he's done it again. He can't help himself. He just did it. <laughs> bit of an anti-climax here, but Rivetta's doing that just for self-preservation purposes. Ward's hearing all of it. And now he knows he can control this fight and win this fight. Go break it up. Standing it up, we got that minute to go. Now Landry Ward wants a knockout, but he's got to be smart here. He's winning the fight. Has the fight won. He took all of it out on the ground there. Rivera just doesn't want to stand. He doesn't want to stand with, with Ward. He knows what Ward is capable of doing. He, he, he has not... He hasn't forgot what happened in that first round at the end. So many fights going the distance tonight, but no complaints here. These have been very competitive. Obviously, nothing touches the main event, which did go the distance. Less than 30 seconds to go, Max. Bonebreaker's corner, giving Rivera last ditch. Short lists. Gotta work, Carlos. I'm gonna separate you. You gotta work. They'll break him up, but the damage has been done. And another point deduction is uh, the dirt on the grave here for Carlos Rivera. Big knee, but it won't nearly be enough. Landry Ward knows this isn't one for the time capsule, and he knows it, but it's a win. And back to the winning ways for the Lone Star Kid. Inside of the Howla, getting ready for the official decision. And was it enough for Landry Ward? Were the point deductions too much to overcome for Carlos Rivera? Big night in the featherweight ranks for Combate Global. We have a big one coming up in the Bantamweights, which we'll tell you about in a moment. Let's take it out. Lupe. Los tres jueces están completamente de acuerdo con tarjetas idénticas de 29 a 26. All three judges in complete agreement with identical scores of 29 to 26. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor del vencedor. Por decisión unánime. The Lone Star Kid, Landry Ward. Tip of the hat, and even with the two-point deductions, Landry Ward would have still won this fight. The margin's a little bigger. And he improves to six and one. The, the knockout will come at another date, but the wins are, don't, are that much more important. Sorry, it wasn't that the He came close, he came close to getting that finish, but it just wasn't today. But he did get that W. Their combined punches is about a minute and a half of Roberto Romero's <laughs> output, by the way. And that's <laughs> nothing yeah, against no. these two guys. <laughs> Romero was insane. We've got to check. I believe it was somewhere in three, 300, 350 yeah, punches that he threw in the victory over Ivan Tena. Oh, what a fight that was. But these boys right here, lots of uh, action from Landry Ward. Gets another victory now, improves 6-1. and one. Forget about that 
loss that he had last time around against Ayer Perez. He apologized. No it's coming. It's coming. That KO I know is yeah. coming for him he one day. He apologized afterwards, and he doesn't yeah. have to. He, it's. We like uh, Landry Ward a lot. Next week, it is David Solorzano, Axel Osuna in the Bantamweights. We're hearing winner here gets a shot at the Black Spartan, the champion, David Martinez. Not at stake here in the main and the co-main. If those, if any of those dudes win, they get an opportunity of, to the chance of David Martinez's belt. So, featherweight. Lots is, of pressure for these guys. Indeed, featherweight is huge, but the bantamweight probably the best in combate global. Valentina Escobar, explosive. Landry Ward back to his winning ways in one of the fights of the year. Thanks for joining us on behalf of everyone who makes Combate Global possible. Campbell McLaren, our producers, Artie Izquierdo, Victor Bagge, Rodolfo Roman, Rorro. My name is Max Pretos. Until next Friday, Placido Domingo.